On the streets of Hobart's northern suburbs, there are bigger worries than the latest instability besetting the Tasmanian government. Health. Mm. Like we have to wait and wait for a long, yeah, long time for the GP stand. and for the <laughs> specialist thing. I haven't been for ages because it's, you've just got to pay, it's like $80 just to see a doctor. Health, education and of course homeless. The continual pressure of cost of living, um, the lack of ability to find safe and affordable housing, um, but particularly the access to a GP in a range of communities across Tasmania is really starting to bite harder than we've seen before. The new cabinet reshuffle prompted by Elise Archer's resignation also means changes in which ministers are responsible for addressing the community's biggest concerns. First time minister Nick Digan is taking on the energy portfolio in the midst of a cost of living crisis. I'm looking forward to seeing this space flourish as it should and making Tasmania the powerhouse of renewable energy in our country. We've got power prices going up and up and up and the Premier's given his training wheeled minister, the, arguably the most important economic portfolio in the state. While Guy Barnett adds the Attorney General's workload to his already hefty responsibility as Health Minister. The political stalemate over Elise Archer's future was solved yesterday. Soon after, Premier Jeremy Rockliffe sent her this letter in which he stated that if she didn't either resign or promise to support his government, he would call an early election. Some political experts have suggested that ultimatum may have breached a law that bans influencing members of parliament through any type of threat or intimidation. We are interested to understand whether there are legal implications from that threat that was made by the Premier to the Attorney-General, former Attorney-General now. There's been no intended threat whatsoever. What we have been doing is focusing on uh, ensuring stability. Continuing distractions for the government while the community calls for a focus on essential services. Laura Beavis, ABC News.